Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Capricorn. <laughs> uh, and if this is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. Let's see, what do these tea leaves have to say tonight? Oh my goodness, everything is on one side. <laughs> All right. So it seems like there's maybe some big event happening. A major thing. Or at least one focus. Oh, and it looks like... And so our card tonight is, and don't let me forget here, uh, the, um, the Knight of Cups. Okay. Yeah. We have some stuff happening. Okay, so I want to actually, I do want to start on this side. I was trying to figure out where are we going to begin. So we have two people. One here, one here. This one almost looks like a giraffe. <laughs> but they're hand in hand, okay? Meeting face to face. They almost look like they're about to dance, okay? Um, there seems like a sense of harmony, uh, love, love enjoyment, companionship, union. I imagine this is romantic um, in some capacity. If this is an old thing, a new thing, an ongoing thing, or something from the past, I don't know. But it seems like it, at least at some point, maybe not right now, but it could be. Um was or is a big deal. I mean, this is like, this is maybe like the love of your life, you know, your, um, you know, first marriage, uh, somebody that kind of maybe is like, you know, the marker for, uh, what love is to you, you know, the, um, not necessarily a first love, but that, you know, that, that love, you know what I mean, <laughs> that love of your life, okay? Uh, now, behind it, and I'm sure you saw this, we have a big rat, okay? I mean, look at that thing, it looks like a big rat, um, and it looks like it is sneaking right up on this pair, um, and so it seems to me, and this is why I'm mentioning, maybe this is a past thing, uh, but it seems like there is somebody kind of getting in between the two of you. I don't know if there was something that, you know, some kind of infidelity, financial infidelity, um, you know, just people in each other's ear or in your partner's ear in your ear family getting involved friends whatever um but i really feel like somebody or a group of somebody's really kind of set out for some reason to break you up break you up um or they are kind of in the process of um creating some uh you know distrust and I say this because the rat, like it's almost, you know, somebody, uh, speaking, um, hidden truths. Um, maybe they're, maybe these are real things that have happened or, um, you know, feelings that, uh, were shared in confidence, um, and then kind of told, you know, to so-and-so and they told you or, 
you know, they told your spouse or your whatever it is, you know, we all know how that kind of stuff goes. Um, and so I just, I think this is, this was very, or is very, I'm hoping I keep saying in the past because I'm really hoping this is something that is already has happened, you know, and we're looking back on this because maybe an anniversary came up or, um, maybe you are having, um, you know, starting to date again. Uh, maybe you are in an entirely different rela relationship at this point. Um, but these, this old stuff kind of comes up here and there. And when we've had kind of a traumatic dynamic within a great love or any relationship, um, of course we carry that with us. That's why, you know, people talk about having all this baggage or whatever. Um, these kinds of things happen. And, um, you know, hopefully as we move forward, um, you know, we create relationships, boundaries, so that, you know, this kind of messiness doesn't come up in, in your relationship or your marriage. I know, you know, I won't go into detail about really the dynamics of my relationship because you all know my husband <laughs> and he's pretty amazing. Um, but you know, I feel like it's my first like real adult relationship. Like nobody else is involved in our relationship. We, do our own thing. We are solid in our own lives, you know, and, um, quite literally nobody has ever, um, said anything negative about him to me, especially people in our immediate life. Um, not only because he's wonderful, but we, we don't create an atmosphere where that kind of talk is even accepted, right? And, um, I think you just kind of, you know, as you process through some of the old stuff, um, when you find a person who you, you know, intend on being with, I mean, really being with creating a life with a family, um, a whole universe together, uh, I feel like you just build kind of a, a force field around you. Right. Um, you know, and I have to say, I know people sometimes on here will say things like, oh, your husband's like so attractive. You're so lucky. And I get that, but I just, you know, not to come down on anybody, but I find it in such poor taste. Um, I would never talk to somebody about their spouse like that personally, you know, I understand it's kind of like a cutesy thing or whatever. And it doesn't come from like a place of jealousy. It just, um, I don't know. It seems, I don't know. You know, <laughs> like I just can't imagine talking to somebody like that as an adult, you know? So, um, I don't know, but you know, you just kind of create, I think that you create a world with somebody. And I feel like as I'm looking at this, I hope that this is a passing or at least this is the, the great, you know, experience where you decide in the future, if you have a romantic relationship that no one will be given room to corrupt it. This is, your own, this is your, you know, this is a sacred bond you have with somebody. Um, you know, people should not be talking about that. They should not be interfering. They should not have opinions about your relationship or your, or your spouse or your, you know, um, that they feel like they can just so easily, um, slander you or your partner, you know? Um, and so, uh, I think that this is, this is something that is in your consciousness and I understand. And I think we all do because especially when we're young, um, people just have everything to say, you know, and we're young and we're young. We just talk about uh, any, any old thing. Right. And, um, 
there's not a lot of they're not a lot of boundaries of course and these are our kind of learning experiences the only thing is that that can be so corrosive right um and so uh as we turn this you know i feel like again we're just still in this kind of like weird vibe here um, there's a person who is running. There's a person right behind them that looks like they are attacking, coming to attack this person. Okay. And I, and I can't help but think that, um, there is just, there has become this kind of almost paranoia about your relationships, about, um, trusting other people, um, people outside of your relationship. And so I think that, you know, to be on a journey towards love, um, it's so, I think it's so important. Uh, and it seems kind of like a weird paradox or oxymoron or whatever, but that we have such strict boundaries within our, um, romantic relationships uh, even though we want to love widely and freely and openly, right? Um, we want a lot of love in our life. But to, I think, take care of the love, to honor the loves that we have, um, that for the love that people have for us, not unlike a child, right? You know, you wouldn't go slandering your child or um, letting people come between your relationship with your child. I mean, hopefully not. It does happen, but, um, you know, uh, I think that this is in all of these close loves that we have, um, we must protect them. Right. Um, because for whatever reason, and I think it, a lot of times it is a sense of, um, misery loves company, uh, you know, whatever, it just, people kind of want to get their little hooks in, um, to other people. Uh, and I don't think that it's always nefarious. I think sometimes people just, they don't realize that they are, um, you know, doing things that are kind of toxic. Uh, maybe they're just kind of a gossipy person. Um, they don't have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, awareness or care for other people's situations. Maybe they're in a bad situation themselves, you know, whatever it is. And, um, but I feel like it's created this feeling for you that like people are just out to get you a lot of the time. I don't think that's necessarily the case though. You know, um, I think that yeah, I feel like through all of this, you've been a lot more discerning about who you allow in your life. And that is a positive. So sometimes we go through these things uh, where we have to just kind of flush our life out of people who um, bring just terrible energy. They actively act against our best interests. Um, you know, like that whole kind of frenemy vibe, right? Which is so weird. You know, I mean, on the other side of it, at, growing up, I definitely had people in my life that we all, I think most of us do. And that's how we learn to be friends and stuff with other people. But, um, you know, people that, uh, I never knew if they were kind of being rude to me, even though, you know, nice or rude, backhanded comments, you know, doing, just taking advantage, whatever. Um, and I think just as you get more aware of these things, uh, it gets to a point where you just can't imagine being in relationships like that anymore. You know, and I guess speaking as somebody who has very few friends, but I have few friends because the ones that I have are so solid. You know, I trust them with my life, um, with everything. And, 
but I think that you just do. You just, you go through these kinds of situations and they destroy you. I mean, it's heartbreaking, right? But you learn from it. And hopefully you can move on and do better, you know, clean your life out and do better. Um, if you have to become like me where you have like, <laughs> you know, no social life, basically, um, which is okay because I have a family. But, you know, you just kind of, um, you know, you just, you find the configuration that works for you and hopefully it does not involve people who are not going to take care with you I don't like this feeling I don't like that you feel that way um, it, it really sucks going through life thinking people are out to get you you know um, now I see here we have a person with a hat and it looks like they are holding up a cup and so we have that beautiful cup um, but this person uh, it very much reminds me of kind of that desert traveler even though you know the cut the um, the knight of cups is a very watery um, card of course there are all of the waves and the peacock and the cup and the waters of life and things like that um, also the um, the crab the cancer but uh I kind of get this feeling of almost like um walking through a spiritual desert right that kind of um you know that period of our lives that dark night of the soul where we go out into the wilderness alone you know and we find um our life stripped down we've lo probably lost some things had some major hurts, done some suffering, you know, and through this kind of process of everything being stripped down, uh, we begin to really find what matters in life. What, what are we actually inclined to do? What are we actually wanting? What is our will? Okay. And so I kind of, feel like you are at times really this weary traveler who has made it through the desert okay um shout out to uh al topo if you've ever seen the movie the little hat that um the guy wears and that that's the kind of hat i'm picturing um and uh coming out of that desert that arid place but still holding that cup of life that holy grail full of water you know you have protected the most vital important thing you have kept it intact you are um, you know the bearer and the protector and the traveler and you know um, fully capable of rebuilding the life that you want you maybe have already you know begun to do this uh, and so I think that although things are not easy it's hard to go through all of that that kind of stuff it can be very lonely disheartening um, you really can't hold a Capricorn down can you <laughs> you have um, just that ability to keep on going you can withstand a lot you also can create power of such depths that you know nobody can really mess with you especially when you are fortified okay so we also have an eye with a heart okay i think uh, maybe kind of a I love myself <laughs> um, we also have let's see do we look at the T we have a T okay so maybe a, somebody with a T name um, involved in the scenario uh, I'm looking at this because it's mirrored 
And I keep thinking these look like dolphins jumping out of the water. So I feel like you're in a very psychic mode. Um, also, we have an owl and a butterfly. So I really do feel like um, we have these um, ultra spiritual, uh, you know, animal uh, symbols here. And so we have the psychic watery um, double dolphins. Then we have the um, the all wise owl, right? The watcher, and we have the the um, transmuted butterfly. Okay, so all this makes sense to me. Um, there's such strength in um, this kind of ability to transition through and to transmute this kind of you know, unfortunate circumstances and to learn from that. We have the, a candle of illumination here. We have a pretty, um, uh, what's the word? Symmetrical, um, to just kind of thing. So I feel like, um, life is really in a balance you're getting into like i mean i know we always talk about your work making monies making resources um really kind of going for some of your desires um you know your love love life and such uh and here i really think you know this is kind of an introspective cycle um all of that other stuff is still intact for sure um, but I think you kind of look back on this and I, and again, I wonder if this is because there is some triggering aspect of either dating life or a relationship that you're having, or even just by yourself reflecting, um, on why, you know, you prefer to be a solitary person romantically. Um, but whatever it is, you know, I think you're kind of in this kind of, uh, contemplating all that. If you are in the middle of the situation, I'm sorry. I'm sending you my love. That kind of stuff is not fun. Having to deal with, um, you know, people involved in your private affairs to that degree. Okay, so we're going to look at the Water Blessings Affirmation Cards. And um, last week we did the Indigo Sage ones. These, Those were the air cards. These are the water cards. And I'm just going to kind of go through here and stop where it feels right. Ooh, I like that one. That's pretty. Okay, and then we're going to turn it over. It says... Fertility, Trinity, yes. Trust the process as divine love always refines. Okay, that's like a total confirmation card. <laughs> it, told, it just it fully um, underlines everything that we were talking about. I think, you know, just the evolution of your experience of love and protecting your love and, um, you know, your capacity to, uh, to, to love ultimately, right? So, all right. I'm going to thank you so much. My last reading of the night, I get to go crawl into bed after this. I'm excited. <laughs> it's a late one tonight. It's almost midnight. All right. So, uh, yes, I'm going to thank you so much for spending this time with me. <laughs> um, if you'd be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm and that is really helpful for the channel, uh, growing, getting in, you know, out there to more people. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little, uh, bell and it will let you, um, know when the next videos are coming out. Um, between now and the next Capricorn, you can, you can definitely watch your other placements, your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising, uh, your Venus, you can do some cross watching. Um, other than that, if you want to leave a comment, I read all of them. It might take me a day or two to get back to you. I, because I reply to all of them. So, um, I, you know, I do as many as I can throughout the day and in the evening and sometimes life is just hectic. 
as it is for all of us. But I do read them and I will get back to you, I promise. All right, I wanna thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will talk again very soon.